And I'm a little surprised at, at when I drew this here that I had drawn it almost exactly so that that peak did perfectly line up. Now, let's, let's kind of, I hope this kind of makes sense here, but basically, basically what we're describing is the fact that if the electron cancels, you can, if the phase of the electron cancels with itself, you can imagine certain specific circumferences where at a given speed, the electron will always come back to a maximum where it started. And here's the cool thing. The allowed orbitals, or the allowed radii at which the hydrogen electron can orbit, are precisely those radius, radiuses, radii, where you can fit a perfectly whole number of wavelengths into one trip around. And that's the heart of the Borat. Obviously, the circumference is 2 pi r, but at which the circumference is, a, is an integer multiple of the de Broglie wavelength. And, and that's exciting. Like, we, we have just geometrically explained away why the electron can only orbit at certain places. I, I think that's it's just a really cool interpretation. And now comes the, the, the disastrous part of the lecture where I try to draw this. Now, if I was smart, I would actually just have slides and I would show them, but that, that takes away the fun of seeing me just frustrate myself to no end here. So let's try this. And now we, we, we can make one more step, and I think this is really kind of cool. Remember those, um, we, we had described the, the energy levels and... I went to great lengths to say that what a quantum system is, is a system that can be mapped to the integers. That any energy level, we can, we can associate an integer number starting at one. And now we can see exactly what that one means. That energy level one is precisely the distance that the electron would have to be to have exactly one de Broglie wavelength around in a circle. So let's do that for n equals 1. And here's our circle. And the way I'm going to draw this here, we're going to start at a maximum. Now, as the electron moves around the circle, remember this is not physically making a circle like this. I'm simply just describing the phase as it moves around. And actually, this is an easier way to say, see it here. If we start with a phase at straight up, as I move around, I rotate this at exactly the same angular speed that I move my arm around. So the phase goes to the bottom here. The phase goes that way. And by one orbit, I've exactly changed the phase by 2 pi. 2 pi radians, to be clear. So the, the way that I can draw this like this is here. Crosses right there reaches a minimum. Now, remember, this is, if you kind of break the, break the link and stretch that out, this would be below. So it goes like that, and then it goes like that. And remember, minimum, maximum phase. And every time the electron goes around, the phase perfectly returns the maximum at the top after exactly one iteration. Now, this is not the, 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 the picture or like the, the actual like physical path the electron takes again, but it's the representation of the phase in a circle. This starts to look a lot cooler once we get to n equals 2 and 3. For, so in, in this case, again, exactly one de Broglie wavelength, dB lambda, around it. n equals 2. This is where it starts to look kind of cool. Damn it, 2. So, 
So now we have, it goes, let me think about this. Yeah, okay. So it starts at the top, goes down, hits a maximum. Now it goes minimum, maximum. That turned out like a peanut. And that's actually what it kind of should look like. Uh, and in this case here, we see there are two de Broglie wavelengths. And again, we can view it as my meat thermometer. <laughs> it goes around once, and then again, it goes around twice. And every time it goes back up here, it perfectly aligns back with that first time. Otherwise, we're guaranteed that after billions of times around, if it didn't perfectly match up, we're guaranteed there would be destructive interference over long time scales. And I think we can see where this is going. N equals three. Let me think for a moment. All right, do it here. That was close enough. It starts to kind of like a boomerang here, or a trimerang or something, um, which is a word that I just made up. But it exactly overlaps with it, or I mean, sorry, it exactly matches back up after precisely three de Broglie wavelengths. And the last one I'll draw is, I'll draw it over here, n equals four. And this is actually one of the easier ones. And watch me screw it up to no end. Um, yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Something like that. So the point is, so if you are at all an artist, I guarantee you can do this better than I, um, but you should have four lobes and so on. That's terrible, but uh, I, I, I think the point is made here that for any energy level, n equals anything, that is precisely the same, the, the number of de Broglie wavelengths in that circumference. And, and this is, it's, it's strangely intuitive, actually, uh, except for the fact that to build it up, we have a, had to assume things that are so unintuitive that it doesn't make sense, but it does. So... Um, that, it, it's a really cool way to, to view it. And, and honestly, I didn't understand the implications of this when I learned this. It was not until I started teaching where this really kind of clicked for me. So I, I hope it's clicking sooner for you than it did for me.